Now, this morning, I'll be speaking to us on the, what I've titled, Speaking Like My Father God. Let's say it together. Speaking like my Father God. Speaking like my Father God. And I have two anchor scriptures. Uh, the first one is John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, and Luke chapter 6, verse 40. In New Living Translation, let's read it together. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. Verse 4, the Word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. And in verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Okay, Luke chapter 6 and verse 40. Let's read together. Students are not greater than their teacher, but a student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. The student that is fully trained will become like the teacher. Praise God. Now, if you look at those two scriptures, it gives us a clear direction about this message. The Bible says, in the beginning. So if we go back to the beginning and see the role of the word, from the beginning. And the first man God made, Adam, and how he related with the word. It tells us clearly where we're going. So we're looking at speaking like my father God. Speaking like my father God. Now, God in the beginning spoke the world. The world in which we live today was created via the word. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, and there was, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, and the earth was without form and void, and there was darkness, and the Spirit of the Lord hovered upon the face of the deep. So there was darkness, there was a huge problem. Everything needed was there present, but nothing was happening until God began to speak. The Spirit of God that created everything was there. The Word was there. The Father was there. But darkness existed. There was void. There was darkness. There was confusion. There was a, an issue. And God said. And God said. And God said. Listen. Darkness will prevail and continue until a man takes responsibility to say. Darkness, void, whatever it is, we continue. Continue until a man takes responsibility to say. And we'll see from Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 31, and God said, and God said, and God said. He kept saying, he kept saying, he kept saying, and he kept saying, he kept saying, he kept saying. You are not permitted to see what you do not say. What you cannot say, what is too big for your mouth will be too big for your life. And God said, and God said, and God saw, and God said, and God saw. So he was speaking. He kept speaking. In spite of the confusion and the void, he kept bringing order to it via the word. So it is the word of the Lord that brings order to our world. It is the word that is spoken, the word that is declared, that brings order to our world. It is the word that is declared. Now, you must understand like, that words, like building blocks, are spiritual forces that produce after their kind. Words, like building blocks, are spiritual forces that produce after their kind. When a word is released, it's a force. Whether negatively or positively, when a word is released, there is a force that backs it up because the world understands that the word created it. So when the earth hears word, it shakes and it trembles and says, in which direction am I going? 
In which direction is this word going? Is it negative or is it positive? So the word is a spiritual force. That is why, listen, your word will be attacked by the devil. It will be a target of attack by the devil. How you speak will be a target of attack by the devil. Because it's a spiritual force. And you need to be aware in your spiritual warfare that your word is something to be guided. Because there are, sp- there are blocks that builds or destroys. John 6, 63, it says, The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. So, you're running around, running busy, going around, accomplishes nothing. What makes an accomplishment? And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. So, words are spirit. They are life. That's what accomplishes. It's not the running around. So every time you are tempted to run around, jump around everywhere, find out what place have you given to the world in this running around? What place have I given to the world? Because your words are spirit and they are life. Now the Bible tells us a little further about words. It said you bless or curse yourself via your words. In other words, some people tie themselves via the words that they speak. James chapter 3, verse 8 and 10. It said, but no man can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Verse 9. Sometimes that word, it praises our Lord and Father. And sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. Verse 10. So, blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth. Surely, my brother and sisters, this is not right. So your words are either lining up blessings or they are lining up curses. You make your choice where you want your word to go. And see, the issue is you have to be consistent. You have to consistently say, let's go back to our father God in Genesis chapter 1. He kept saying what he wanted to see in the direction. That was why the word went to work because it understood the direction in which it was going. We are here to create. So when the word flows and it goes in the same direction, it goes. But men are full of words that curse and men are full of word that bless. You confuse the Holy Spirit when you live like that. Every time you speak a blessing and you speak it consistently, the Holy Spirit knows that that is the direction it's going. Every time you speak a curse, the, the devil takes it over because words are spirits. Words are spirit. Nobody may be there when you speak it, but the earth is there. The Holy Spirit is present everywhere. So you must learn to speak consistently in the direction that you want your word to go. You must be consistent. And I discover from scripture that your very good future, or you're not so good, because I don't want to use the contrary, Your not-so-good future is tied around your words. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 to 21. It says, a man's belly, in other words, your life, will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips, he shall be filled or made empty. You are either filled with what you say, or you are made empty with what you say. Verse 21, let's read together. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What it is saying is, you can speak death, or you can speak life via the word. Either of them that you speak is what you see. Either of them that you speak is what you see. So take it seriously. Take it seriously. If there is anything to change, let it change from this service. Your future, good or not so good, is 
tie to how you use your words. Very much so. And you see, you don't need the pastor to be there. The Holy Spirit is there. Where I am not, the Holy Spirit is there. Where nobody is, the Holy Spirit. Listen, this is how it works. You speak the word. Angels say, yeah, in which direction? Say, okay, it says, build. And then they take the word. And the Holy Spirit comes together with them. And say, he said, let us build. So they build. That's how it works. I don't, nobody needs to be there. Whether in the most secret place. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that darkness is like light to God. That's the God we serve. When you think you're in the dark, nobody sees you. God's eyes are just all over and can see you. So, whether anyone is there or not, learn to speak in the direction you want it to go. We saw the first man, Adam. He was like God. That's the original creature. When God made Adam, he was like God. He stood in the middle of the garden. He began to speak. You are called lion. You are called spider. You are called hippopotamus. You are called whale. You are called eagle. And he kept speaking like God is father. And that word stood fast. Nothing has changed since then. When the original man spoke. That's the original intent of God. For you and I. To go back to that place with him. Where we are like him. We were made in his image. Say, I was made in the image of my father. Say it, convince your neighbor. I was made in the image of my father. So I must learn to speak like my father God. I must speak like my father God. Now, why do man's word fail to work? Number one is defilement. Matthew 15, 11. Look at what Matthew 15, 11 says. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. It's not food. Say, ah, this food is dirty food. I won't eat it. I won't touch this one. No. Say, no, you, don't make, you are not made dirty by what goes inside you. It's what comes out of you that defines you. So what comes out of a man defines a man. What comes out of a man defiles him. What comes out of a man. So when the word that come out are not pure, there's defilement. So the spirit says, I don't understand what's going on here. Why is this? This man just left the church. Why is he speaking profanity? Why is he talking bad about his neighbor? Why is he talking bad about her neighbor? Why? So they don't understand. And you see, many of us mess up our lives via the things that we say about other people. What is your business with another person? And see, you make other people's business your business. When you speak about somebody bad, what you are doing is the angel and the spirit, they walk together. They say, what is this man? He just came from church. Pastor just told him, speak like your father God. Is this one saying? He's saying now, or she's saying now, like his father God, we God say this? And then the angels are confused. So the word will not work. And then instead of working in their favor, listen, every time you release a word that doesn't work for you and it's negative, the devils take it and they work with it. That's where they come in. Because you are here, they are just right under. As you speak the word, it falls. They speak it and say, ah. He says he has headache. Boom. Let's give him headache. And they hit the head. He say, hey. They hit another. Hey. Why? Because negative words have been released and it must be performed. There shall be a performance. There shall be a performance. Good or bad, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Why do words fail to produce? Men replace the word with tradition. Tradition. Mark 7.13 says, and so you cancel 
the word of God, in order to hand down your own tradition, this is only one example among many others. You cancel the word of God via tradition. You know, my elders say that when I want to do this, I must do this, I must buy this, I must follow this. No, it has to be this way. You cancel the word of God via your tradition. When you believe in tradition of men, men have a lot and lot and lot of protocol. They say on that job, you have to spend 10 years before you can be promoted at all. So that thing limits them and keeps them there, waiting for 10 years. And if they are not careful, 10 years come, they don't get it. Because they have believed in the tradition of men. They say that in Canada, you cannot earn more than $12 an hour. And so they believe their tradition. So that tradition has cancelled out the word of God. Be careful the tradition and the things that you hear. Be careful how you hear. That's what Jesus was telling someone. Be careful how you hear. Beware of the tradition of men because it cancels out the word of God. So you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own tradition. Why do words fail to produce? Using the wrong words. Using the wrong words. I tell you, even in your prayer to God, you must ask the Holy Spirit for the right word. Holy Spirit, how do I pray here? We're here on Friday night, and the Holy Spirit led me to minister to people individually. So I closed the service, and I started calling each person, one after the other. And I say, let's wait on the Holy Spirit to hear a word. It's a different word for a different person, for a different situation all the time. Even in your prayer. That's why James was saying, they ask and they do not receive because they ask amiss. Now, if we learn to partner with the Holy Spirit, he is the one. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says, for, you know, I cannot, my, I have infirmities, but the Spirit helps my infirmities with groanings and words which cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the great future that you are looking for. He is the one that knows the right word. Learn to wait on him. Don't just enter into prayer. Oh, pragadabadaba, umbosuzo, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and this. No. Ask the Holy Spirit, how must I pray right here and now? What word do I use? When you use the wrong word, look chapter 21, verse 15. Look at what the scripture says. It says, for I will give you the right words. Who will give you? The Holy Spirit. I will give you the right words and such wisdom that none of your op opponents will be able to reply or refute you. In other words, when I give you that sound word from heaven, the devil cannot stop it. That's why words fail to produce. When we use the wrong words. When we use the wrong words. Now, what do you do to make your word like God's word? And produce in the direction that you want it to produce. Number one, understand that the process for a word to be released is this. It comes via thought. For every word a man speaks, it lines up here first. And then it flows through there to come out here. So what do you do when you understand that process? Take your thoughts captive. Listen, thoughts are not words. And, so, and it was Kenneth Hagin that explains it this way. He says, like a man walking outside and birds are flying all over, all over. But you see, as you can't stop birds from flying over all around you, but you can stop them from perching on your head. You can't stop thoughts from flying around, but you can stop them from settling. Because if those thoughts settle, they become your words. 
they find their way to become your word. And this was what Jesus was speaking in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 to 35. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew 12, 34 to 35. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. He said, you brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Whatever is in your heart determines what you say. So be careful what you think about. Be careful what you process in your mind. Be careful. See, sometimes when Jesus was making this clear, he told them, the people of his days, he said, a man does not commit adultery when he calls a woman or another man and sleeps with him. No, he said, that's not where it starts. It starts when the thought enters your mind and you picture it and you frame it and say, hey, ah, look at this girl, look at this guy. Ah. That's when the adultery is committed. In the mind. Before it settles. The moment it settles in the mind, it is done. So be careful what settles in your mind. Be careful what you're thinking about. If you want to change your world and what you say, be careful what you allow to settle in your mind. Verse 35, look at what it says in verse. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. So there is a treasury where words come from. There's a treasury. What are you putting in your treasury? Treasury means storage. What are you putting in your storage? What are you storing in your mind about your neighbor, about your friend, about your colleagues at work, about family members? What are you storing? Because what you are storing will one day come out. Once it's in store, it's lined up, it's just waiting for the appropriate time to come out. So what do you do? Stop it from being stored. Stop it from being stored. So to stop it from being stored, what do you need to do? Take thoughts. Take captive your thoughts. Take your thoughts, what? Captive. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Let's read this together. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You need to take it captive at the thought level. Take it. What does it mean to take it captive? Bind it. I bind you thought. Lose your hold on me now. Get out. Lose it. I will not be subject to that. Satan, you lost out already. So before it manifests at the top, there is no one. This is the process, always and ever. Before a thing comes out here, it is processed here, and then it's stored, and then as it's stored, it begins to find its way, and one day, boom, it comes out of the mouth. It's about everything in your, in your life. Even include blessing or cursing your children. One day you heard somebody say something negative to their child. So that's a good idea. Look at how that child behaved. Maybe one day I will use it too. And then that day you caught it. You didn't catch it captive. You didn't take it captive. So it's stored up. It's stored up and stored up. Waiting for a day. And one day your son did something. You say, bam. Because you stored it up. So take thought captive. Tell your neighbor, take thoughts captive. He said, casting down imaginations. So when it is beginning to rise up as an imagination, cast it down. Take it captive. I bind you. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against you. I must never speak evil again forever. Not from my mouth. So as you are staying in my heart, lose your hold of me and get out. That's what you need to do always. And consistently, as you consistently do that, what happens? Then it begins to flow. I pray that somebody from this service will begin to take every thought captive and begin to reorder them. So what do you do then? 
Process the word of God in your mind. Process that great future. Imagine your children succeeding. See them on the thrones. See them become great evangelists, great preachers. And as you are thinking about it, do you know it's difficult to put positive images in the mind than it is to put negative images? It takes more work to put a positive mental picture and imagination up than to put negative ones. Negative ones are flying around. So you need to do more work. Process it mentally. Spiritually, see your children great. See your husband great. See your wife beautiful. See those great things happen. See the six pack of your husband. Just like, you know, my wife imagines a lot. And and can't you see that it's there? Praise God. So when you process it mentally, by the spirit, Spirit of God, it comes to pass. So put up the image. Put up that image. Put up that image. So when you are able to take the thoughts captive and put the positive mental picture there by the word of the Lord, then gradually what you find is you begin to see your life line up with the word of God. And then you begin, like you cannot catch me. My mouth says something negative. Ah! You will work hard. You cannot. Even when it doesn't look it, I cannot. Why? I have processed it in my mind, the kind of future I have envisaged it. I have seen the beauty and the glory of the tens of thousands. Right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm talking to the tens of thousands. I'm seeing that auditorium. Why this way? Why that way? Gone this way. I'm big. That's, that's where I am. That's why sometimes I speak out loud. You think you are the only one I'm talking to? No. I'm talking to the tens of the thousands. I see myself in that beautiful auditorium where I just stood there and I kept declaring the power of God. I see healings and deliverances. I see great miracles happening. Why? I processed it here. And so it's coming out through here. So you need to change it from where it matters for you to see it begin to happen. Now I saw a couple of examples in scripture of men who spoke like God. And their words stood fast. The Bible, speaking about the man Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 19, look at what it says. And Samuel grew. So you need to grow. Say you need to grow. Tell your neighbor, grow up. He said, and Samuel grew. And the Lord was with him. And did let none of his words fall to the ground. His words did not fall. Remember how he lived? He was committed to the Lord from the early days of his life. He was taken to the temple. He under the ministry of Eli. And he was there. He was learning it. He heard the voice of God from that little age. And then he grew as he was growing. The word was growing. And none of his words fall to the ground. You want your word not to fall to the ground? Grow up. Grow up. Enough of the elementary fundamental building that you, you've, been, you've been at this level for so long. Too long. Every time, everything new. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah, I, I have to go ahead. I have to run. You run around too much. Settle with the world. Grow up. Build up. Acts 20, 32, I commend you unto God and the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. So are you looking to grow up? Settle with the word. Make his word your word. And very shortly, your word will be like his word. Make his word your word. And shortly, your word will be his word. You find out that every time you speak, oh, it's blessing. Oh, bless you. Bless you, sir. Oh, wow. Well, even though it hurts me, but I just bless you. Even though it hurts me, but I just say bless you. At that time, you'll be able to carry advanced forgiveness around. Advanced forgiveness. Looking for somebody who will offend you. And the moment they offend you, say bless you. So bless you. Bless you. Grow up. 
So as you grow up, I see God show up for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So Samuel was that kind of a man. And everything Samuel said came to pass. It stood fast. There was another man, Elijah. In 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 10, the Bible says, And Elijah answered and said to the captain of the 50, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you. And what happened? And there came fire from heaven. He spoke like God. He spoke like God. His word stood fast. Because he didn't mean, he wasn't playing around with words. Elijah was not playing around. One day, children came and was mocking him. Mocking him, mocking him. Bye, head, go up. Bye, head, go up. I'm sure they didn't record that part. If I be a man of God, all of you, you're mocking me, you are mocked now. And the Bible says, a she bear came, devoured all of them. He wasn't missing around with, stop playing around with words that you don't mean. Stop playing around with words that you don't mean so that your word can count. So that you can speak like your father God. And when you say it, it's hold fast. You are all witnesses of some of the declarations that we have made here. That job, nobody else gets it. If somebody else gets it, they will, God will overturn it and overturn it. And it will get to you and it will give it to you. And we have testimonies lining up. Lining up. One of us said, Pastor, but you said it. I said, don't worry. Wait and see what God will do. And within weeks, they call her back and said, that person who took that job couldn't stay on the job. She's gone. Are you still interested? Say yes. He said, come and take it. And they gave it to her. Another person had the same testimony and took and run with it. And the word kept producing because every word of God stand fast. Learn to speak like your father God. And then your world will wait to submit itself to you. Shall we rise up this morning? <laughs>